You're listening to a New York Yankees episode of the Jacob Falk Show. He's breaking down the team's latest goings on as only he can. Follow him on Twitter at Real Jacob Falk. Here he is, Jacob Falk. Hello, Yankees fans. Welcome to another New York Yankees episode. Of the Jacob Volk. I am the Jacob Volk. And you're not. And maybe that's a good thing. Because in the last week and a half, the Nets have lost, the Islanders have lost, and the Yankees have shown their true colors. Last week, after they swept the Blue Jays and took two out of three from a good athletics team, I said, you know what, maybe they're turning a corner. Maybe they're not as bad as we thought they were. I was wrong. We know who the Yankees are. The Yankees are not a good team. But they're not a bad team. The Yankees are just decent. We have waited for three months to see these guys wake up and hit. To see these pitchers come together and shut down their opponents. They have not done that. Every time you think the Yankees are going to burst out, they lose. The Yankees aren't a bad team. The Orioles are bad. The Rangers are bad. The Twins are bad. The Diamondbacks are bad. The Pirates are bad, etc., etc. The Yankees are better than those teams. But they're also not good. The Astros are good. The Red Sox are good. The White Sox are good. The Giants are good. The Brewers are good. The Mets are good. Etc., etc., etc. The Yankees are not better than those teams. And they're not going to flip a switch and become better. I've been saying this for a while. For the Yankees to get back into contention, they're going to need their big guns to start hitting. That hasn't happened. Luke Voigt looks nothing like the guy who led the majors in home runs last year. Glaber Torres has regressed epically. Gio Urshela has been solid, but nothing special. DJ LeMahieu has been solid, but nothing special. The notion that these guys are going to suddenly flip a switch and turn the Yankee season around is incorrect. It is a false assumption. It will not happen. It's been three months. If they haven't turned it around by now, they're not going to. Okay, the notion that all of these guys are going to get hot and stay hot long enough for the Yankees to claw back into the playoff race is ridiculous. The notion that Garrett Cole alone can lead the Yankees to the playoffs is absurd. Behind him, the Yankees pitchers are good, but they're not great. I like Jordan Montgomery, but he's not great. I like Domingo Herman, but he's not great. Jamison Tyon doesn't seem like he's going to work out. I'm not giving up on him 100%, but I'm skeptical. 
Michael Kane gives up too many runs in the first inning. That's the last thing on earth you want from your starter. You never want to start a game in the hole. Before your team even has a chance to hit, you're losing. That's not a good place to be. I mean, all you have to do, if you want me to prove my point, is just look at what happened this past week. The Yankees take care of business against the Royals. They win two out of three. Would I prefer to sweep? Yes, but I'll take two out of three. Just win series. I'm okay with that. You travel to Fenway Park. A huge series. You're on a little bit of a hot streak. You won the series against the Blue Jays. You won the series against the Athletics. And you won the series against the Royals. If you can win this series, hey, you know what? We've got something here. Instead, you get swept. You only score seven runs in the whole series. To put that into perspective, the Red Sox yesterday against Garrett Cole, his first start as a Yankee against the Red Sox, scored nine runs. You remember the Yankees teams from the mid-20-teens? They'll finish around 85 wins, but they won't make any noise. You'll never look at them as a serious threat in the playoffs. That's this team. This team is dead in the water. They're not going to make the playoffs. Okay? It's not happening. They've got too many teams in front of them. They have too much ground to make up. What they would need to do to get back into the playoff race is impossible. Let's say LeMahieu gets hot. Let's say Torres gets hot. Let's say Voigt gets hot. Let's say Urshela gets hot. You're making the assumption then that Judge, Stanton, and Sanchez will stay hot. That's not how it works. You're not going to get this team clicking on all cylinders. It's not going to happen. The Yankees are done. I am throwing in the towel. I'm waving the white flag. The New York Yankees will not make the playoffs. That brings up the question, where do we go from here? I'd say fire the hitting coaches, but that doesn't do anything now. It's to the point now where firing the hitting coaches is just too little too late. You had the chance to try to make that work earlier in the year. Now it doesn't help you. The reality is the Yankees need to ride this out. They've got to ride it out with this current coaching staff, and that includes Aaron Boone. Now, let me just say that I don't like Aaron Boone. I don't think Aaron Boone's a good manager. Me saying that the Yankees need to stick with Boone is not a compliment to him. It's just nothing will change if they fire Boone. It doesn't make the Yankees better. I mean, look, I'll say this. It's clear that this team is underachieving. That's proof positive that the manager needs to go. That's like the cardinal sin. If you're leading a team that's underachieving, if you're not getting this team to where it can go, you need to be held accountable for that. So if you get rid of Boone, I understand the logic behind thinking that the Yankees can turn the season around. Two things, though. Number one, midseason firings rarely work like that. Sometimes they do. In 2003, Jack McKeon was a midseason hire by the Marlins. They went on to win the World Series. Pop quiz, you know who the manager to start that year was? Jeff Torborg, the former Dodger. Sometimes it happens, but more often than not, it doesn't. I mean, I'll say this. If you have a top managerial candidate ready to go, 
and you've gone through back channels, and he said to you, yeah, all you have to do is fire Boone, and I'm ready to sign the contract. You can do that, but that doesn't solve the entire issue with the Yankees, because Brian Cashman needs to be held responsible too. You don't want Cashman making another managerial hire. You don't want Cashman firing Boone and hiring a new manager. And then the owner fires Cashman. And the GM is forced to keep the manager. That doesn't work. If you're going to fire them both now, and they should be gone, okay? I don't see how they're back next year. You can do it, but again, it doesn't change anything. You're no better. It's too late. You've missed the boat. We're too close to the trade deadline. So even if Hal Steinbrenner has a candidate in mind to take over for Cashman, that guy would need to hit the ground running and do a lot of legwork on trades in a very short period of time. I'm willing to let Cashman and Boone ride out this year. Not because I think they can turn this around. I don't think they can. I just don't think the Yankees have another choice. I just don't think it helps matters. So with that being said, where else can the Yankees go? I was listening to Moose and Maggie today on WFAN, the best show on that station. Maggie threw out a couple ideas. Number one, rearrange the infield. From first to third, go Voight, Torres, Urshela, LeMahieu. Because I think it's pretty clear that Glaber Torres isn't a major league shortstop. He led the American League in errors committed by a shortstop last year with 9. He's currently leading the American League this year with 11. That's who it's designed to help. And sure, I'm okay with it. I don't mind trying it. The season's lost anyway, so let's try to find a place for Torres because it's not short. I'm with you there. The Yankees have a lot of guys who aren't good in the field. Miguel Andujar. Is Miguel Andujar a good outfielder? Come on. No, he's not. You have him in there because you have no choice. His bat is better than Gardner's and Frazier's put together. You've got to find a spot for him. It's not third. It's not DH. That's Stanton. I don't think Andujar can play first. It has to be left. It's not like the first baseman they have is any good. If you want to try and do hard there, I don't mind it, but Luke Voigt is not a good fielding first baseman. I don't think he's terrible. I don't think he's as bad as some people make him out to be, but that play against the Red Sox, allowing the runner to advance to second on the pop-up, that's inexcusable. You put up with it because of his bat, but you know what? He's only hitting 217 this year. Again, you keep thinking he can turn it around, but at some point, you've got to put it all together. So look, would changing around the defensive alignment of the infield help the Yankees? Sure. But it doesn't do much. There is a real analogy for this. I just can't think of it. The only thing I can come up with is this. You're bleeding from 10 different places. And all you've done is fixed one bleed. The guy's still bleeding from nine places. You're not done. Like, that doesn't do much. There's still a lot of work to do. The second idea she had would be really popular among Yankees fans. Call up the former top prospect, Estevan Floreal. 
The Yankees need a center fielder. We all know it. You can put Andujar in left, Florial in center, and Judge in right. The thing is, though, while it would be a popular move, I don't think it would work. This year in Scranton, Floreal is hitting just 219. In Somerset, he wasn't much better. He was hitting 229. He was getting on base at a decent clip. The slugging is there. The speed is there. He's not great in center field, but he's not awful. At this point, you live with it. Defense is the least of the Yankees' problems right now. Okay, if you're winning a bunch of games, then talk to me about improving the defense. But the Yankees' issues are way, way, way beyond defense. So I'll overlook the glove. I can't overlook the average, though. 219 in Scranton? He struck out 40 times in 28 games. He does seem overmatched by AAA pitching. So while it would be exciting to see Floreal, I don't think it helps the Yankees a lot. I mean, you have nothing to lose. You're in a lost season, so you might as well play your prospects. I understand that. But I think Yankees fans are going to grow tired of Floreal pretty quickly. He'll be another Yankees top prospect that didn't work out. Shades of Jesus Montero. So, Jacob, you're throwing cold water on everything. What do you suggest? Well, it's pretty simple. Actually, the Yankees just need to sell. They need to do what they did in 2016. The big assets that they have, you've got to trade them. Now, Joel Sherman wrote something similar to this. But he threw out a very big name that the Yankees should trade. And it doesn't get any bigger than this. Literally. Aaron Judge. Joel Sherman thinks that the Yankees should be open to trading Aaron Judge. Now, when you first hear it, it makes you want to buy a copy of the New York Post and throw it out. I'm not going to go as far as Sherman did, but I'll say this. I understand his logic. What trade pieces do the Yankees have? Their last sell-off was 2016. When they had two big expiring contracts, if I can use that term. Araldis Chapman and Carlos Beltran. They also had Andrew Miller. And I'll get into him in a minute. But Chapman and Beltran were on the last years of their deal. Those were the obvious guys for the Yankees to treat. And they did it. They got good holes for those guys. Glaber Torres has had some good seasons for the Yankees. I don't think anyone's giving up on him. Obviously, he's in a slump right now. And I'll never be mistaken for Ozzie Smith in the field. But I'm not giving up on him. I think Torres can still be a regular contributor for the Yankees. Carlos Beltran, they traded for Dylan Tate. Dylan Tate was later traded to the Orioles for Zach Britton. I think we can all agree that Zach Britton has worked out really well for the Yankees. They don't have that here. Corey Kluber only signed a one-year deal, but he's going to be out until August. You're not going to get anything for him. Justin Wilson's on a player option, and Darren O'Day's on a mutual option. That's the closest thing you have to expiring free agents. You're not going to get anything for them. So you need to look to an Andrew Miller type. A guy who you have control of for multiple seasons. The thing is, though, you've got to replace them afterwards. 
If you're going to trade guys under team control, you've got to replace them for next year. This isn't a team that's going to go through a big rebuild. They don't have the roster for it. I don't think the fans would accept it. I wouldn't accept it. You can't sign guys like Cole and LeMahieu and then turn around and say, yeah, we're going to rebuild for a little bit. No, that doesn't work. You made a commitment to be competitive. It didn't work this year. Okay. So what are you going to do next year to fix it? If you're going to trade guys under team control, you've got to replace them. Whether it's trading for their heir apparent, anointing someone currently in the farm system as the heir apparent, or going out in free agency and signing someone. Trading for someone in the offseason, doing something like that. You've got to have a plan. You can't just sign an older player to a one-year deal and say, yeah, this guy's going to be in the starting lineup for us until July 31st, then we're going to trade him to the highest bidder. That won't work here. I mean, I disagree with one of Joel Sherman's points that the Yankees don't have anyone of value that they can trade besides Judge. They're not going to trade Garrett Cole. He has a no-trade clause. They're not going to trade DJ LeMahieu. He has a no-trade clause. But Gary Sanchez could get you something decent. A lot of teams need catchers. Gio Urshela, you'd get a pretty good haul for. Jordan Montgomery, you'd probably get a good haul for. Domingo Herman, you'd probably get a good haul for. You go in the bullpen, you could probably get good hauls for those guys. The best haul would be Judge, but realize you're taking off a lot of the fan base. This guy's the face of the Yankees. Everyone loves him. I understand that the Red Sox traded Mookie Betts, but they were under a payroll crunch. The owner wanted to cut payroll. Hal Steinbrenner doesn't want to cut payroll. He just doesn't want to go over the luxury tax. So yeah, if you sign Judge to a big extension at some point, maybe you will end up going over the luxury tax, but then you're turning into the Tampa Bay Rays. You're trading these guys before they get their big boy contracts. And then it's just a vicious cycle. I don't like that. This is the Yankees we're talking about. So look, just to boil it down to the ground, I do think that the Yankees need to consider trading guys under team control past this year. I'd be hard-pressed to trade Judge Is anyone untouchable? Judge is as close to it as you can get. Yes, you'd get an arm and a leg, but you'd also sink any chances you have of winning soon. No one you get back in a Judge trade will be as good as Judge. Alex Verdugo isn't as good as Mookie Betts. Could they trade a guy like Urshela? Sure. Sanchez? Sure. Loisiga? Sure. Sessa? Sure. Not judge. I get the logic. I do. I just have a tough time getting behind it. I know I'm going kind of long here, but I do want to say this. It's clear that Boone and Cashman aren't going to be around for much longer. This is who I want to replace him. I'll start with GM. Theo Epstein would make perfect sense. 
He's shown a fantastic ability to combine analytics with traditional baseball. He's ended two big World Series droughts. He's a future Hall of Famer. I don't know if he wants to be a GM again, but Epstein would be perfect. He was in Boston. He was in Chicago. He knows how to win with big payrolls in big markets. He's the perfect choice for the Yankees. If not, I've got an outside-the-box candidate. Friend of the show, Bill Ripken, wrote a book that I interviewed him on, State of Play, the Old School Guide to New School Baseball. He outlined his philosophy for baseball in that book. And look, I agree with it. A lot of what he said I agree with. I actually can't think of anything I disagree with off the top of my head. Go back and listen to the interview. Tell me anything he says that's wrong. I understand that he has no front office experience, but we're living in a world where these people come in from the outside and take high-ranking positions Usually I don't like it, but it seems like Bill Ripken has a good head on his shoulders. I think his philosophy makes perfect sense. If Epstein says no, Ripken's the guy I want. In fact, the perfect scenario would be Theo Epstein as GM and Bill Ripken as assistant GM. Let Ripken get some front office experience. And for manager, there's only one guy I want. It's not Buck Showalter, okay? I don't like Buck Showalter. People always say that his teams get better after he leaves. He leaves too early. No, he's not leaving too early. His teams are getting better because he's not a good manager. Come on, use your noodle here. This guy's never won a game in the LCS. He's a smart guy. Knows a lot about baseball, just isn't a good manager. Very overrated. No, I do not want Buck Showalter. I want John Farrell. A World Series winner for the Red Sox. Won three AL East titles for him. Laid the groundwork for the 18 World Series. Knows pitching better than anyone. I think Farrell's the perfect guy. He knows the AL East. He's local. Was born and raised in New Jersey. I don't know if he grew up a Yankees fan or not. John Farrell's my guy. But I will say this. I want to see who else is fired. Maybe there's some out-of-the-blue name that goes. And I'll change my mind. But as of right now, John Farrell's my guy. Led by either Theo Epstein or Bill Ripken. New York Islanders show comes your way Wednesday night. Regular episodes of the Jacob Volk show come your way every weekday afternoon. Next week I'll be on vacation so you won't get a single show. That's why I gave you a long show today. That and this team is absolutely infuriating to me. Until next time, I am Jacob Volk saying, if you don't play to win, why keep score?